Last week, I got a box from Philips, and it's one of their latest momentum lineup of gaming slash entertainment monitors. The box design is very commercial, not very gamer-ish at all, with most of the features listed on the box. Wide viewing angle, 165Hz of refresh rate, 1 millisecond response time, smart ergo base, and HDMI. Not too sure why they didn't include display port as a feature though. Alright, so let's first look at the unboxing experience. Right on top of the opening flap, you get unboxing instructions. So what to do, what not to do. You gotta lay it down and open it up like this to prevent the contents from falling out. In the box, you get full-size HDMI and a display port cable. You also get an AC cable that plugs directly into the monitor to power it up as the power editor is in the monitor itself. You also get the manuals and the stand. The stand is easy to attach by simply screwing in the bottom. And what's new with the Momentum lineup of monitors is that they are packed face down with their VESA mount facing up. So I can easily grab the stand I previously installed clip it on the back on the monitor and lift it up like this. Simple. The design of the monitor reflects how the box design is. Commercial rather than gamery vibes. You get small bezels around the left, right, top with a chin down at the bottom, the Philips logo in the middle, and the Momentum branding sits at the bottom left corner of the monitor. Not at all distracting and looks very professional overall. The stand, however, uh, deviates from the professional commercial look a bit, and you get a bit of a Spider-Man or Hela's vibes from it. You guys know Hela, uh, Thor's sister. So the stand goes up and down um, for as much as 13 cm, so like this, and then we get to swivel it left and right, and then we get to tilt it, and we also get to pivot it both ways for 90 degrees. So you can have the chin position at the place you want, either left or right, up to you guys. And something that most of the people that uh, missed out is that sometimes installing cables at the back of the monitor is actually a lot of trouble. And being able to turn it around like this and install it from the side is so much more easy. So I don't know about you, but pivoting and allowing you to install the cables from the side makes my life so much easier and it would definitely make your life a lot easier as well. So enough about how it looks from the front. At the back, you get one joystick to control the OSD. Some people call it the nipple, but I know it doesn't matter the main joystick nipple, call it whatever you like. So long press to switch it on and off and left side for the menu. No, no, actually no, it's the right side for the menu and you get the usual features such as turning freezing on or off, brightness, contrast control, color control and overlay crosshair for games. But what surprised me the most is the option to pick the color temperature of the monitor. You get to choose 5500K, 6500K, 7500K. I don't usually run into this option unless the monitor is made for professional use in the studio or really high-end monitors, such as the BenQ Photographer Monitor line up, uh, which costs a lot of money by the way. It's like you can buy probably buy seven or eight of these. So then next thing I look is the color accuracy. I grabbed my Calibrate and tested its factory accuracy. You can see the factory accuracy here uh, on the screen. It doesn't deviate much. And funnily enough, the 6500K is more accurate than the sRGB mode. All right, so I grabbed my Calibrate and then we calibrated the monitor. And what I got was uh, sRGB gamut of roughly 120%, NTSC and Adobe RGB at 80%. So this monitor is excellent for media consumption and production work such as photo editing and other color accurate workload when you're not gaming. However, I must note that the advertised NTSC and Adobe RGB percent on the website is not the result that I got. Now let's get down to actually using it. I'll go through the specs really quickly and as expected, uh, it comes with a pretty standard specification for its price point. It's an IPS panel, um, 165 hertz of refresh rate, Full HD resolution, comes two HDMI ports, and one display port. According to the website, the variable refresh rate of this monitor goes down to 48Hz at up to 165Hz max. So here you can see the monitor running at 665Hz and I'm running the UFO test. So there's four overdrive settings uh, on the monitor. It's also called Smart Response. So it's got four settings from off um, all the way to fastest. We're getting a little bit of ghosting trailing after the UFO. So a bit of ghosting and a bit of overshoot. So on the other hand, I also have the Gigabyte M27Q here for comparison. Um, 
the Gigabyte M27Q, if you don't know yet, there's a lot of reviews on the website and everyone says it's great for the price. So it's about 700 ringgit more, uh, but also 1440p resolution instead of 1080p. So price point wise, it's about the same if you bought it in the 1080p resolution. So you can see less losing an M27Q and slightly more on the Philips one. So I've tried playing CSGO and PUBG on it. After being used to gaming in 1440p resolution um, at 27 inch 1080p, sometimes I just can't see far enough. Like I can't make it out whether it's a player or is it a tree or is it a car. Far objects are blurry and I can't be too sure what I'm looking at. While the refresh rate is high and the ghosting is minimal, the one catch this monitor has is that it's only 1080p. But for the price, what can you complain about it? Viewing from roughly 60cm, I'm still able to see pixels. I have some samples of text here as well, magnified, so you guys can see for yourself at 27 inch, uh, what kind of text clarity you guys would expect. Uh, personally, at 60cm away, I can still see pixels and for reading, it is not the best. So conclusion, whether or not this monitor is right for you comes down to what you use it for. I recommend this for gamers on a budget due to the fact that this monitor is only 1080p instead of 1440p and 1080p is a lot easier to run than 1440p. For gamers with an entry level to mid tier GPU, who isn't looking to crank your graphical settings up to max. 1080p is still the sweet spot for gaming if you didn't know that, and it's far easier to achieve 165 frames on the 1080p than 1440p. While the pixel density is not high on a 27 inch Philips monitor, I'm still sure it will give you a much more immersive experience than a 24 inch monitor. And I'm sure the white color gamut also helps with your cinematic experience when you're not gaming. So I hope this review helped you. Like, subscribe, and tell me more down in the comments what you guys want to see from us. Cheers, guys.